Good evening and welcome to this evening's presentation from the Agency for Public Information. I'm Sheridan Lewis. On this evening's program, a technical cooperation agreement between the governments of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Federative Republic of Brazil now further strengthens diplomatic ties between both countries. This country prepares to welcome the Simon Bolivar School naval vessel out of Venezuela. St. Vincent and the Grenadines will join the world in observing the United Nations Public Service Day on June 24th and we'll bring you highlights from a visit to the Office of the Prime Minister by a number of students from the Pamanus Burke Government School. Let's begin with Newswatch with Kisha Woodley. Good evening. Welcome to News Watch for Tuesday, June 13th, 2017. I am Keisha Woodley. The Statistical Office of the Ministry of Economic Planning, Sustainable Development, Industry, Information and Labor will be conducting a labor force survey in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in June 2017. The main purpose of the labor force survey is to measure the size of the economically active population with the view of providing guidance in the formulation and implementation of labor market policies and programs. The statistical office is therefore soliciting the full support and cooperation from the public, especially the household selected for interviewing. Your positive response to completing the questionnaire accurately and to the best of your knowledge is important to the overall success of the survey. The information provided will positively impact the development of our country. The preliminary results of the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, are out. A release from the Ministry of Education on June 9th stated that 1,638 students wrote the final examination and that the proportion of students who met the prescribed standards was 1,398 or 85.35%. Of the 797 females who sat the CPEA, 737 or 92.47 percent met the required standard, while of the 841 males sitting, 661 or 78.60 percent met the required standard. This year's top student is Rosario Brown of the Kingston Preparatory School with a 98% average, Shanice Harper of the St. Mary's Roman Catholic and Genevieve McMaster of the Windsor Primary tied for second with an average of 97.60% and also a tie for fourth position with Keanu Child of the Georgetown government and Ashlyn Francis of the St. Mary's Roman Catholic, both with an average of 97.20%. In health, the HIV AIDS unit in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment launched its Carnival HIV Awareness and Safe Sex campaign for the second consecutive year. Our unit is committed to providing avenues for prevention, treatment and care so that we can achieve the UN AIDS global mandate of having an AIDS free generation by 2030. The Catch the Vibes, Not the Virus campaign for us at the National AIDS Secretariat and the Ministry of Health as a whole is much more than an HIV carnival awareness sex campaign. It is also an act of social responsibility. We are responsible for promoting a healthy nation and as such, we must educate the population on the importance of healthy behaviors and the role of prudence in preventing sexually transmitted infections and HIV. Local soccer artist Rayon Madzot Primus is the Catch the Vibe, Not the Virus campaign ambassador. He stated that he is happy to be on board with the National HIV AIDS Unit. My team, Dawson here, and I, um, we approach 
um, Nika, Az Azania, and Miss Roach, and we ha we've been having meetings for the past uh, months. months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, been putting stuff together, and I'm really excited about about what we have been doing and what we can do going forward. One of the things, one of the contributions that I've made um, today, the 7th of June, we officially release a song. It's called Catch the Vibe. And it's... Thank you, thank you. Finally, on News Watch, in recognition of World Accreditation Day, the National Accreditation Board Unit held a ceremony to launch their website on Friday, June 9th, 2017. The ceremony was held at the Peace Memorial Hall. Senior Education Officer Mrs. Decimal Hamilton described the launch of the website as one of the joys of the Ministry of Education, namely the Accreditation Board. It is a joyful occasion in that very often when we have to communicate with our regional neighbors and when we attend the regional meetings, we are often asked, do you have a web page? And we'd have to refer them to a slot that we share on the Ministry of Education's web page. Today, that is going to change. Other remarks were made by the chair of the accreditation board, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose, and representative of the Information Technology Services Department, Ms. Harriet Keane. This is where we conclude this edition of News Watch. Thank you for viewing. Good evening. I am Keisha Woodley. We need you. We need your help for better decision making for our country's development. What are household surveys? We at the National Statistics Office use household surveys to collect economic, environmental, social and demographic data about you and your living conditions. We need data from you and the members of your household to ensure that when the government, businesses and other organizations make decisions, they respond to your needs. These decisions should address your concerns about education, healthcare, employment, the youth, crime, and so much more. The specific types of data we will collect depend on the purpose of the survey. In the OECS region, we generally conduct labor force surveys that help monitor and measure levels of employment, surveys of living conditions to establish poverty lines and identify the poor, household budget surveys or household expenditure surveys to assess how households spend money on goods and services. Multiple indicator cluster surveys, which provide data on characteristics of women and children. Health and wellness surveys, which collect data on the population's health. And other ad hoc surveys on youth, ICT, environment, and agriculture. How are data collected? Most surveys are collected through face-to-face -face interviews. An enumerator, that is, an official who collects data for the National Statistics Office, visits the household, interviews household members, and records the responses on a paper or electronic questionnaire. The data collected will be kept confidential by law. The enumerator will identify him or herself by producing a National Statistics Office ID. Why is it important to participate in the surveys? Surveys only collect data on a sample of households. If your household is selected and you do not participate, this affects the survey results. The quantity of data collected may not be sufficient to produce quality statistics necessary to make the right decisions for the development of your community and the country. Play your part and participate in the next survey. Help us to help you. This message is brought to you by your National Statistics Office with support from the OECS Commission and the Government of Canada. Thanks for staying with us. The Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Government of the Federative Republic of Brazil have enjoyed a long-standing friendship, having established diplomatic relations since the early 1980s. These bilateral relations have now been deepened on Wednesday, June 7th, with the signing of a technical cooperation agreement between both countries at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Conference Room.
Ashisha Sam tells us more in the following report. An integral part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' foreign policy is its outreach to emerging economies such as the Federative Republic of Brazil to bring economic, social and cultural benefits to the country. Having established diplomatic relations with the Federative Republic of Brazil in the early 1980s, it has always been this country's goal to strengthen bilateral relations between both countries. This was accomplished on Wednesday, June 7th, with the signing of a technical cooperation agreement between both countries. Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Sir Louis Straker, signed on behalf of the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, while Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, His Excellency Antonio José Rezende de Castro, signed on behalf of the Government of the Federative Republic of Brazil. In his remarks, Sir Louis Straker noted that he and Ambassador His Excellency Antonio José Rezende de Castro have been engaged in talks about developing a stronger relationship between both countries, and he is happy that this has materialized through the signing of this technical cooperation agreement. We are very glad that this day has come, and we look forward, Your Excellency, to stronger ties and more a signing of more of these agreements with your country. We need to develop these initiatives so that we can have the necessary technical assistance to develop our personnel and our economy here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We thank you very much for being here and for signing this agreement with us. Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, His Excellency Antonio José Rezende de Castro, said the signing of this technical cooperation agreement is the first step towards strengthening the cooperation between both countries. The ambassador lauded the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, particularly Permanent Secretary Mrs. Sandy Peters Phillips, for her work towards the finalization of this important agreement. We have been engaged in cooperation with the Caribbean for a long time through CARICOM, OAS, CELAC. But it was high time to start regular bilateral work with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The agreement signed today is the first step towards strengthening and deepening cooperation between our countries, giving us the necessary legal framework to contribute more objectively and immediately to the economic and social development of our peoples. I wish to thank Foreign Minister Sir Louis Straker for his continuous encouragement and interest in this matter. All the technical and diplomatic staff of the Ministry and other stakeholders who intervened in the negotiation of the agreement, and especially the Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Sandy Peters Phillips, whose work was decisive to overcome the last hurdles prior to the signing of this agreement. At the end of the day, cooperation is only successful if it makes a difference in people's lives. I hope that Brazil and St. Vincent and the Grenadines together will find solutions to the challenges of development. This technical cooperation agreement commits us to work together more closely towards our common goal, the strengthening of bilateral relations between both countries for the overall benefit of our people. To ensure a successful implementation of this technical cooperation agreement, both countries are committed to work together to develop and pursue many initiatives and strategies that will gear towards the development of our people and therefore will be one of the top priorities on the agenda for the Department of Foreign Policy and Research. In this moment of celebration, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to everyone whose dedication and efforts have contributed to the finalization of this technical cooperation agreement. In particular, I would like to thank His Excellency Antonio José Rendez de Castro, the resident ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil, and his many colleagues. Their insights, goodwill, and friendship have made the signing of this agreement a reality today. So thank you. In closing, 
I would like to say that I am confident that through our efforts and commitments, we will be able to achieve more and continue to strengthen the bonds of friendship between the people of the Federative Republic of Brazil and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I would like to take this opportunity to reassure you that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will partner with the relevant line ministries where necessary for the successful implementation of this agreement. His Excellency Antonio Jose Rezende de Castro noted that South-South cooperation is a vigorous instrument of the Brazilian foreign policy and an essential part of its commitment is the economic and the social development of its neighbors and friends. Brazil's international technical cooperation takes the form of actions to share knowledge, technologies, good practices and experiences with our partners in a two-way street and goes beyond mere solidarity with the cooperation partners serving as a promoter of economic development. Technical cooperation is one of the main modalities of international development cooperation and an instrument to strengthen Brazil's relations with other countries with an emphasis on economic and social integration. It is focused on developing capacities to identify, mobilize, and improve knowledge and competences available in partner countries to achieve local autonomy to design and implement solutions to development problems. Brazil's cooperation with other developing countries is grounded in the principles of solidarity and mutual benefit, national ownership, respect for national so sovereignty, and non-interference in domestic affairs. Non-profit and disconnected from commercial interests, such cooperation is demand-driven and free of impositions or conditionalities. As everyone knows, Brazil is a very important country within this hemisphere. It is a member of that emerging economic bloc known as the BRICS, which includes Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa. And part of our foreign policy has been the outreach to these emerging economies where we can be benefited economically and socially and culturally from these countries. Today, we are about to sign a technical cooperation agreement, one of many that we would be signing as we develop stronger relationships. St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Federative Republic of Brazil have had amicable relations since the early 1980s. And over the years, the two countries have made meaningful strides to intensify and solidify said relations in the spirit of cooperation, development, solidarity, and territorial integrity. Deputy Prime Minister Sir Louis Stricker outlined the strides made by both countries. In 2010, the government of the Federative Republic of Brazil established an embassy in Kingstown. Currently, the embassy is headed by our distinguished ambassador, De Castro. In keeping with its foreign policy thrust in Latin America, St. Vincent and the Grenadines appointed His Excellency Andreas Wickham, resident ambassador to Venezuela, in Venezuela, to serve as con current non-resident ambassador to the Federative Republic of Brazil. The cordial ties between the two countries were further enhanced on March 3, 2009, following the establishment of an honorary consulate in, uh, Saint Vincent de of St. Vincent de Grenadines in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the appointment of Giuliano Vicenzo Locanto as honorary Council. In 2012, the Brazilian government advised Mr. Locanto that his tenure in the capacity as honorary consul in Brazil had expired in accordance with Brazilian laws and therefore required renewal. Mr. Locanto subsequently sought renewal to continue in the said capacity with the strong recommendation of His Excellency Andreas Wickham due to his strong performance. 
Discussions between the two countries to int intensify their relations via cooperation activities have also been held at the multilateral level, specifically at the first Brazil CARICOM summit held on the 26th of April 2010 in the city of Brasilia. Numerous cooperation agreements were concluded specifically in the areas of agriculture, education, culture, and the general technical cooperation agreement. However, due to issues related to the Portuguese text, the agreements had to be renegotiated and are presently in process. Nevertheless, the following agreements have been concluded. One, agreement between the government of the Federative Republic of Brazil and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on visa exemption for holders of diplomatic, official, and service passports. That is in force. Two, agreement between the government of the Federative Republic of Brazil and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on visa exemption for holders of ordinary passports. It is noteworthy that since 2010, the main exchange area between Brazil and the CARICOM has been agricultural cooperation, which is mostly developed by Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, Embrapa. Representatives from St. Vincent and the Grenadines have participated in numerous capacity building courses in the area of agriculture with Embrapa. The knowledge transferred by Brazil ranges from food production, genetic, genetic enhancement of species, improved methods of, of cultivation, irrigation and harvesting, use of agricultural machinery, animal husbandry, and the processing of its byproducts to food marketing. Concerning commercialization initiatives. Brazil has achieved mark remarkable progress in regards to the creation of producer cooperatives aimed at adding value to production and increasing the income of small farmers. Following the signing of the Technical Cooperation Agreement Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, His Excellency Antonio José Rezende de Castro hosted a cocktail at the Brazilian Embassy in Rathamil to network with the Minister and the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Reporting for the API, I am Ashisi Sam. You're viewing a presentation from the Agency for Public Information. Stay with us. The program continues in just a moment. Mommy, mommy, can I have a snack, please? Sissy, mommy, we're real busy right now. Just take a snack from the counter. No, mommy. Those have too much salt in it. Can I have a fruit, please? That's an interesting choice. But where did you learn that? The people on Hellwood. No, Mommy! You want to kill me with high blood pressure? Helpful says whatever salt you eat for the whole day should not be more than one teaspoon. And that is just for adults, you know. Foods may contain more salt than you think. Reduce salt intake. Welcome back. A Venezuelan naval vessel, the Simon Boulevard School Vessel, will pay an official visit to St. Vincent and the Grenadines from the 14th to the 17th of June 2017. The vessel is also known as the Venezuelan Ambassador Without Borders. While in Port Kingstown, there will be an official guard of honor and welcome ceremony on Wednesday, June 14th at 10 a.m. at the cruise ship berth. Later that day, the visiting crew will play a friendly football match with the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force football team at the grammar school playing field, commencing at 4.30 p.m. The vessel will be open to visits from the public. Here's more in the following interview with the APIs Keisha Woodley and Venezuelan Ambassador, His Excellency Yuri Pimentel. Yuri Pimentel, yeah. thank you for talking to us. Thank you for being here. How are you? Good, great. Yes, great, great to be here. 
I understand that the Venezuelan Institute for Cultural Cooperation has a very special activity coming up. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, uh, next week on uh, Wednesday, 14th of June, it's, uh, it's going to arrive to St. Vincent a vessel, a Venezuelan uh, vessel called Simon Bolivar, like our liberator. It's uh, the Simon Bolivar vessel and uh, it's also known as the Ambassador Without Frontiers. It's a, it's a very beautiful ship where our cadets and our office officers in the Navy, they, they, they train there. Um, but they visit, that's why they, it's called an ambassador. They are always traveling around the world, visiting all the countries and getting in touch with the populations in, in those countries. And this year they, they are making a big tour in the, in the, in the Caribbean. They started in April, they were in, in Mexico, in Colombia, mm -hmm. in Cuba, and now they are in another, uh, making another tour. They already, already have been in uh, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. now they are in St. Kitts and Nevis, and on next week they are going to, to arrive to, in St. Vincent, that they will be here uh, in Kingstown, they will be here uh, mm -hmm. uh, for three days, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, they, they will live on on uh, Saturday morning uh, and what we wanted to do is to invite everyone who mm -hmm. wants to go because uh, something very special with this vessel is the possibility you can go inside the vessel and you will have a tour uh, a guided tour with the with the officers in charge. You can visit the, the vessel, and where the, I'm sure you are going to show some images and some video about the vessel. It's a very beautiful boat, so I think it's uh, very interesting for for the persons who would like to go. Everyone is invited. Will be the vessel will be open to visits on Wednesday, starting at 2:30 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 7 p.m. The, on the first day of arrival. On, on on Wednesday. On Thursday, it's from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And on uh, Friday, it will be all day long, from 9 a.m. to mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Uh, at night. So everyone uh, will have lots of possibilities to, to, go. to go and visit uh, the, the ship. Will there be special numbers allowed at a certain time or can any amount no, of No, you, you can go, you mm -hmm. can go the, the, they make the each tour mm -hmm. uh, for the information we have uh, each tour it takes about 30 minutes 20 to 30 minutes and they are they normally they work with groups of about 50 50 persons so if you go and there is a tour on on uh, you just, yeah, on, on the on, on the making you just have to wait for some minutes mm -hmm. and that there's you don't need to to sign up uh, anywhere you can go directly to the to the dock in the in the here in the in, cruise in, ship in, yeah, the, in the cruise, cruise ship, ship in, 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 in Kingston and you can go and visit without many protocols. You can go and visit. We invite especially all the schools, all the, uh, I think this is a great uh, activity for, especially for the kids and the, the, mm -hmm. the young ones. Yeah. Also for our own cadets and yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. Personnel. Yeah, yeah. Every everyone is invited. We already spoke with all the mm -hmm. authorities, of course, all the police, all the all the all the, the special forces you have here. They are also everyone is invited. Everyone can go. I think it, especially for kids, it could be mm -hmm. very interesting. But any anyone can go, and it, in the three days that's going to to be here, it will be open almost every day as, as I just said. Mm. What was the reason behind the construction of this ship? It's a, a training school for cadets. Yes, it, it's a training school. Uh, it's like um, uh, it's like an elite boat in, mm -hmm. in a sense because the cadets that are here and the officers they are the, the best ones in uh, that you have to deserve to, to, to oh, be in this to earn a place, to earn a place in this ship, ship. because okay. it's a very special it represents it travels all around the world that the now they are in the Caribbean from here they are going to St. Lucia after that they are going to Curaçao and they are going back to Venezuela mm -hmm. uh, they also go to Europe they participate in in cruise so uh, cruise competition so um, 
it's uh, it's uh, to be there and, mm -hmm. and to, to participate in this uh, in this in this ship and to be part of the of the group that is in, on board of the ship is a, a very special it's it's a, a special kind of honor. a prize yeah, a special honor mm -hmm. for the men and women are in our navy so um, it's also a school for them it's also a school and and they are the ambassadors that uh, mm -hmm. they represent our country so it's very important that the best ones are there and I think it's going to be a very for them mm -hmm. the, we also have exchanges they are going to have yeah, a, I wondered a, about that. yeah they are yeah. going to have a soccer match with the police forces okay. and this and the grenadines they are going to visit the, 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 the yeah they are going to visit uh, all around St. Vincent and the grenadines and especially in Kingston so the mm -hmm. the idea is the people to people exchange interact, to interact yes. yeah because we have some protocol activities mm -hmm. we have to do it but the most important for us is the person to go to the boat mm -hmm. to the to the vessel to visit it to to uh, get in contact with the with our uh, with the persons that are uh, traveling in this boat and also for them because that's um, you know we have I, I always say this we have a very special relation with the uh, with all the Caribbean but uh, with St. Vincent the Grenadines in particular we have a, as you know a very good relation with the with, the, with between our both, both our governments mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, we have made lots of agreements we have petro carib we have alba we participate in lots of international uh, uh, and multilateral organizations mm -hmm. together but sometimes we miss more mm -hmm. uh, the relations that from people to people, people. To people. Yeah. That, that's that's the kind of thing that uh, uh, activities like this mm -hmm. one could could reach. Yeah, I think it's very important and it bridges the gap, so to speak. Yes. Because people don't normally get to meet you, for example. <laughs> You're just maybe a face they see on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. So all of these activities connect people. That's it. And it's good. It's very it's good. Very, very important. That's why I wanted to, to invite all of you and, and, and and everyone who c could be uh, seeing this interview and listen to the, this, in the, this interview, please go and participate. I think it's a beautiful experience. It's a very beautiful vessel and uh, the people is very, very pleasant and they, they will be very glad to, mm -hmm. to receive all the Vincentians uh, aboard of uh, the Simon Bolivar vessel. Yes, and before we, we go, Simon Bolivar, his, his goal was to have a united South America and even to the Caribbean. The Caribbean, yes. And how does this tie in to his, the legacy that he has left? Yeah, the, 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 that's a very good question, you know. Uh, Simon Bolivar, for, for the persons who don't, maybe they, they, they could know this, it was, uh, our independence was in the 19th century from in our case we are dominated by the Spanish, Spanish. Empire um, and we gain our independence in the battlefields uh, in, it started in 1810, 1811 and in the last uh, battles, big battles were around 1820 and our liberator, the leader of our troops and uh, also a political leader it was Simon Bolivar that's why he liberated what today we know as Venezuela, mm -hmm. Colombia Panama, uh, Ecuador, oh, no. Peru, and Bolivia. Mm -hmm. uh, but the connection with the Caribbean was very special because he, he also wanted to, 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 to come to the Caribbean, to liberate countries in the Caribbean. And he received lots of help in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. When he was defeated, not once, twice, uh, in Haiti and in other places in the Caribbean, he received lots of help. To, to restart the struggle that mm -hmm. finally gave us the independence. Mm -hmm. But you also had this project, as, as you said, of uh, union mm -hmm. between our countries. Because he understood that our countries separated from each other, mm -hmm. we were against the big empires at, the, at that moment. But mm -hmm. it's the same situation same, yeah. today, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, just together, just with the bonds between us, the, the small countries, we can be a strong voice in international mm -hmm. um, 
uh, around the world mm -hmm. and that's what he tried to do he, he couldn't reach it at that, at that moment but it's still the same dream of, of integration of union and uh, I think that especially in recent years we have made big steps in that direction mm -hmm. uh, getting together working together uh, in the past i remember as a venezuela we, we, we never looked to to to, mm -hmm. to the caribbean mm -hmm. we are very close from here and mm -hmm. uh, there was no connection uh, uh, whatsoever with, with the caribbean now that's totally different yes. you know mm -hmm. that's uh, that oh, reality oh, special yes yeah, especially with the with the arrival of president chavez to power and mm -hmm. now with president maduro the connection of venezuela mm -hmm. with the caribbean is very very strong um, and uh, that's the possibility that this kind of activities give mm -hmm. to us you mm -hmm. know and uh, the, the the best name for this boat is the, the name of Simon Bolivar Bolivar. because his dream was the integration was the union of our countries and uh, especially uh, with the Caribbean that gave him so much and mm -hmm. uh, made a lot for us now we sometimes people doesn't remember but the, the independence of south america and in, in it depended a lot on the help mm -hmm. we it was given to 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 us at, 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 at that time uh, uh, from the countries in the in the peoples of the caribbean okay thank you ambassador thank you very much i hope everything goes well yes and i hope everyone goes and visit uh, Remember once again, it's, it will start on Wednesday, mm -hmm. 14th of June, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday next week. Mm -hmm. uh, almost all the day open to, to visit and uh, we'll be glad to receive you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay with us. The API's presentation continues in just a moment. The National Commission on Crime Prevention, the NCCP of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, welcomes visitors and returning nationals to the hottest summer festival in the Caribbean. We make a special appeal to everyone, visitors and locals alike, to remain alert at all times during our celebration of Vinci Mars. Keep in mind the importance of carnival to our nation. We implore you to keep it safe. Stop the fighting. Leave your weapons at home and let's stop crime in its tracks. The NCCP wishes Vincentians and visitors alike a happy carnival carnival season as we celebrate in the June July sun VC Mass the hottest carnival in the Caribbean Thanks for staying with us St. Vincent and the Grenadines will join the rest of the world in observing the United Nations Public Service Day on Friday June 23rd under the theme Accelerating Innovative Citizen-Centered Approaches for Improved Service Delivery. The day recognizes and celebrates public servants' contribution to sustainable development. The Public Sector Reform Unit, PSRU, in the Service Commission's department is spearheading a week of activities aimed at improving citizen-centered approaches to service delivery. The API's Dion John spoke recently with Deputy Director of the PSRU, Mrs. Emma Jackson, and Research Officer Andrea Hazel. Here's more. Public Service Week happens to be a UN-designated day. Um, it's the 23rd of June, celebrated every 23rd of June. And this year, we are again following the UN's um, stipulation. The UN actually has their theme for this year, but we've dubbed our national theme, which happens to be accelerating innovative citizen-centered approaches for improved service delivery. Now this year, um, the UN will be meeting at The Hague in Netherlands, and they will be having a forum for two days, the 22nd to the 23rd of June. We've decided, as we've started um, two, three years ago, to have uh, a week of activities. So ours begin from the 19th of June and will end on the 23rd of June. Our focus this year is on improving citizen-centered approaches to, serve, to service delivery. So the activities are all centered on how we, as the public service, can learn from one another and the public as well in delivering quality service for all. 
this week of activities around the citizen-centered approach, all our activities would highlight some form of um, citizen-centered approach in terms of learning from ourselves, the public servants, as well as getting information from the different um, public, the different entities. So our activities, for example, um, we have a customer service award for the best, not customers, yeah, customer service award for the best department within the public service. That we're going to hear from the public because the, there's a voting going on right now. Digicel platform as well as NTRC's website. You vote for your best um, service department and on the Friday the 23rd we'll announce the winners. So there's a first, second and third place. So our intention is to get from those winning departments what made them stand out in the public eye and we in the public sector reform unit will take that information and see how we can learn from them and spread it across the rest of the public service departments. <laughs>
The reason being, even though Public Service Day is mandated the 23rd of June, the church service is on the 19th. The reason for that is because I believe, and or we in, in the public sector reform unit believe that in everything we do, we must give God praise and thanks first. He comes first because without his strength, without his direction, we are not able to do what we are doing. So that, that service is basically to endorse the week of activities and to bring as many public servants and even well-wishers from outside um, to the New Testament Church of God where we can all exalt the Lord name on high. Um, also, um, it is the intention to have uh, a public servant delivering the sermon for this church service. And this year, again, we would be having one of our um, lay preachers. Um, he is Mr. Sylvester King. And um, we believe that he will do um, justice to delivering a good sermon because he would be delivering a sermon around the team for public service week. Yep. So it is something to look forward to. We are anticipating that quite a number of public servants would be in attendance. As a matter of fact, um, the CPO has already given approval for up to 15 members of staff from each ministry and department to attend that church service. We would like to encourage everybody to come out and support our week of activities, especially that for Friday the 23rd, our panel discussion, which will be taking place at the Peace Memorial Hall. We're going to begin at 9 o'clock. We have five panelists which range from private, public sector, regional experience to share with us how, based on the topic, how do we accelerate innovation in the public service in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's going to be a very interesting discussion. We're going to have a spot called Bright Spot. Come and find out exactly what that means. And um, the Prime Minister will be given a brief remarks as well on that day. So let's learn from everyone and see how we can improve our service delivery and make St. Vincent Grenadines a better place. Public Service Week is not about the public sector reform unit. It's about the entire public service. We happen to be mandated with the task of putting some activities together. So we just want to encourage all public servants to participate in all of the activities that we have um, this year and um, to give it your best um, effort. Um, I know that there are some time constraints, but um, I, I do encourage you, let us celebrate each other. Let us encourage, encourage each other and um, come out, come to the church service, the panel discussion, participate in the Public Servants Recognition Award, the Staff Exchange, and also vote for your best department. And let us have a good time together this year for Public Service Week 2017. They are small and impressionable. How you interact with them is very important. So don't believe for one second that anything you do won't leave a lasting impression. The power to make a positive impression is in your hands. By playing with them, reading to them, talking and singing to them, you can help them develop positively because children are never too young to learn. This message was brought to you by the UNICEF Office for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, the Caribbean Child Support Initiative and this station. Welcome back. Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez hosted 21 pupils from the Pominus Burke Government School at his office on Monday 13th June. As part of the tour, the pupils also visited the Botanic Gardens and the Argyle International Airport.
The API captured the moment at the office of the Prime Minister. How is everybody today? Hi. Are you guys? Hi. My name is Omarelli. How are you guys doing? You're just outside, are you? Mm. What is your name? Huh? Yeah. 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 The flesh. Your family is only in Pitybrodel. <laughs> you know the, the, the exam? You have friends who did that? You know the results came out on Friday? Huh? You know that? You know, everybody is going to go to secondary school. You know that? So that when you reach to do CPEA in grade six, I'm going to have all of these numbers for you too, you know. I'm going to look up to see how you all did. I'm going to see what my grade one class did. You hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to do better than they did? Yes, sir. Aha! Ha! You have to tell me how you're going to do better. You have to tell me how you're going. How are you going to do better than this? Explain to me. Explain to me. You're going to study harder. Yes, sir. And pay attention to your teachers. Yes, sir. And listen to your mom and yes, dad. Yes, sir. And don't go out under the almond tree and do dance up in front of the music. Yes, sir. They have the music out there sometimes. Sometimes you're tempted to go out there to listen. No, oh, you're not tempted. Okay, very good. Very good. Don't don't hide your face. You want the TV, you want the TV camera to show you what? Could you imagine you come on TV in Byra and when everybody watching you <laughs> you wouldn't like that. <laughs> your friends would laugh at you. I <laughs> say boy, you, you you have to hide your face. Well, this room here, you know what they call this room? This is the cabinet room. Here's where the decisions are made for the government. And this is my chair. And the other ministers of the government sit down on both sides. You think we should have some snacks? Yeah. Let's see if they have some snacks here. It's an orange drink, pulpy. You want my cake too? You love it? Okay, I have my cake. You get some water for me, brethren? Yeah. Thanks. Mm. This one is a nice meat pie. You know, when I was a boy going to school in Connery, and we do a, a march on the road or anything like that for some celebration, when we go back to the school, they'll give us on beef and penny bread. Yeah. Say good morning, Sir Louis. Good morning. Could you imagine that I was a little boy like you? A little boy. <laughs> I must have very good memory. <laughs> oh, yes, I was a little boy like you. I didn't just get big, you know. I was small one, one time. This is, this is Pamela's book. Primary from Myra, they came to visit me.
Here's where we end this evening's presentation from the Agency for Public Information. Do join us again on Thursday for another program. On behalf of the production team, thank you for viewing. I'm Sheridan Lewis. Good night.